All right, uh, welcome to uh, spring 2017. Uh, it's kind of the way we're starting with spring ball this year with our guys and our coaches and everybody. Such a new, fresh start. Uh, we're going to approach uh, every day this spring as it is it a game. Uh, you know, we have 15 opportunities to go out and compete, and we're going to go out and compete at a high level. Our, our kind of our theme for that is to make it like a game. Uh, last year's objective for the spring was um, discipline and conditioning. Uh, we made huge strides in that, which is very evident. Um, through our penalty reduction. Um, that's our foundation. Um, this spring, our focus in all three phases will be directly connected to execution. You're going to hear that from me uh, over and over and over again. You'll probably be tired of hearing it. I'm expecting our coaches to create situations through drill work uh, that will improve our ability to execute the smallest of details. Our problem areas uh, for last year, uh, last year's team offensively were, number one was turnovers. Uh, and mainly fumbles and tip ball turnovers. Um, and, and a lot of people ask the questions as we were going through the year, how do you fix those? What, what, are, what are the ways that you fix them? Is it players? Is it, you know, is it coaches? Is it scheme? What, what is it? So in December, I told people that it was very important for us in December. Uh, the main thing that I identified in December uh, of watching what we do, how we do it, and evaluating everything that we do was that it was our eyes, our vision, our lack thereof, uh, that caused us to have most of our fumbles uh, and tip balls. When I say lack of vision, I hate to use uh, Mike Singletary. All you guys know Mike Singletary. I've got a defensive reference talking about an offensive drill, is that if you remember anything about him, as you've seen his eyes. And at the snap of the ball, his eyes were always where they were supposed to be, but they were so big, they were like 50 cent pieces, because he was not only reading his keys, but he had a great amount of awareness. Well, this year, the reason why we, we put so many balls on the ground in different situations or tipped the ball up in the air in a lot of different situations were simple. Uh, a lot of it had to do with awareness and vision, uh, whether it was a back uh, still protecting the ball great but getting hit on an angle where he never saw the extra defender, which we're going to concentrate and call him the thief this year, uh, the extra defender coming to hit us on the side or uh, a receiver uh, potentially spinning back into the thief and getting hit and putting the ball on the ground, or a receiver's eyes going down the field right before he catches it and he gets bounced up into the air, or a quarterback holding the middle field safety for a certain amount of time and then not getting off the line uh, just enough to make the throw because he's worried about where his eyes are and his reads. That's vision. Uh, and that will be directly connected to us being better of taking care of the football. The number two thing was protection of our quarterback. Uh, and everybody thinks that that is directly connected to the offensive line and how they play. Uh, it's not. Uh, in every situation. Uh, the number one person that's responsible for protection of the quarterback is the quarterback. Uh, we're going to do a much better job this year uh, of making sure that we get the ball out of our hands, whether we get a big play or not. Uh, it's going to be a big point of emphasis for me, Tony Peterson, to the quarterback of taking care of himself, uh, of not holding the ball in the three second time frame and 3.1 and 3.2 and trying to create a big play, which we did not create a big play. We usually created a big play uh, for the other team. Uh, our O-line uh, has to be better uh, at this as well. Uh, but we're going to give them confidence and no them knowing and understanding that we're going to try to get the ball out much quicker than we got it out last year and, and that we will be where we say we're going to be at quarterback. Uh, the final part of our protection uh, as it pertains to the interior is our running backs. Um, a lot of people um, you know, see running backs as the people who carry the ball. Uh, but a lot of our uh, sacks and harries and hits uh, came from situations to where not necessarily from a running back missing uh, an assignment, which some of that happened, uh, but it also came when the running back was supposed to be there to support one of our tackles or guards uh, in a chip situation where we had a lot of speed on our offensive line and we had worked really hard on that and diligently on that. And it only shows up uh, in the, uh, the, the media guide or the press guide as a sack for an offensive lineman. So we, we're going to have to get better at that. So the guys that want to carry the football this year are definitely going to have to protect a lot better than we did last year. It's very easy to see who can carry the football. But just imagine if every time we went out on the field, we put a guy in to run the ball and we put a guy in to protect uh, for the passer. It makes it a lot easier to stop us. So we've got to, uh, before we start saying who should be carrying it and who shouldn't be doing this and who should be playing, uh, they got to be able to play a full game. Uh, the other thing is... Uh, and the last thing on offense that we've got to address and we have addressed is our run game. Uh, our run game will be directly uh, better uh, by uh, penalty discipline uh, to, to keep us on schedule, but also 
Um, the main reasons that it would be better is that our quarterback and our running backs alignment discipline. Every time that we take the field, our alignment uh, was 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 um, all over the place at certain times throughout the year that we watched that we tried to correct. We did a good job of correcting it, and when we corrected it, uh, we did better in the run game. The moment that we had a lack uh, of, of discipline in our alignment, um, we fell back as far as the running game is is concerned. Uh, and then run game lack of physical identity. We think that we have identified the person that is going to give us a more physical uh, identity on offense. Uh, you guys will hear more and more about that as we move forward. Not going to give him sugar before he proves it. We got a three or four day time frame before we can see him in, in shoulder pads, but we think that we've identified somebody that's going to give us a little bit more of a physical identity on offense running the football, uh, even in our protection. Uh, we think that we found a young man that, that is very deserving of a role, and we're going to try to give him the opportunity uh, to earn that role. Defensively, um, it starts with eliminating uh, the big plays, and there's three reasons for um, having big plays. It's unoccupied rush lanes are the first one. Before we get to anything about talking about sacks, uh, it was my job, and it is my job, to make sure the real reasons that we are getting some of these passes down the field and these scrambles for big plays where are they coming from? Some of the Virginia Tech big plays that you can think of, some of the plays down the field that you think of, it wasn't just guys not getting to the quarterback. It was unoccupied rush lanes. Uh, we brought in uh, Coach Prunty to help us with that, and we think the transition uh, will be good for our football program. Uh, that's the number one reason. Number two, I thought it was complicated communication in our pass defense. Uh, so simplification of exchanging of information will be crucial in our pass defense's improvement, and that's what we've been working on. Uh, less talking uh, and, and, and a whole lot less understanding that has to go through with every call. So since uh, January has happened, we've tried to simplify the way that we communicate uh, from our safeties to our linebackers, from our linebackers all the way down to our defensive front, which is going to help us uh, as we move forward. You know? And then finally, tackling on, on, on defense. This is a coaching opportunity that we can take full advantage of. Uh, and when I say that, is that it's not only the ability to teach tackling, it's the ability to teach scheme to people that can tackle. Uh, that's what we have to do a better job of. I found uh, throughout looking at all of our games, we got four or five guys that went in at different points of the game uh, that tackled really, really well. I'm not going to talk about those guys, but there were games where there were some clear opportunities for us to go tackle the football, and we had guys tackle it. We also were in situations to where we had some clear opportunities to tackle the football that we did not um, take full advantage of. Now. Um, you know, we will have a couple of scrimmage opportunities throughout this spring. I look forward to it. When we hit Bagwell Field, I expect our guys to be able to bring some of these things together offensively and defensively, but, but that's not where it, it, it ends. Our special teams play in the beginning of the year and in the middle part of the year uh, was not what it should be, and we take full responsibility for it, and we're going to fix that. Uh, but the special teams, the biggest deal that we have to look forward to is more availability of student athletes. Uh, Depth, depth, depth. This team is a much, much depth, uh, deeper team than it was last year. Um, and it's not just because we've added guys in recruiting, but it's uh, mainly because of some of the guys that we, we've redshirted last year, uh, with some of the guys that will be returning to the team this year uh, that, that were not with the team uh, the previous year for one reason or another. Uh, depth will be a big, crucial part of our special teams in our return game and also in our coverage game. So we're looking, uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, and the final part of what we're looking for in spring ball this year is core leadership, um, direction and a mutual interest by our players. And I think that we have that. I think last year we had some leadership, but it was leaders trying to pull the team in a direction. Now we have the core uh, part of our team going in the same direction without a lot of trying to figure out and wonder what I'm thinking, what I'm trying to get done. I'm not guessing anymore. I know who our players are. We're looking forward to our spring. We're looking forward to a great start today. And we're looking forward to our players already knowing offensively, defensively, and special teams-wise what our scheme is. So we're going to spend a lot less time trying to teach offense and defense and a lot more time uh, correcting and, and executing uh, our fundamentals of the game. Coach, it sounds like you guys are going to more of a, a five DB, but base-wise, just what do you think that extra DB might bring to the, the table um, in place of another linebacker move? Uh, well, athleticism is the first thing that you would start uh, with, but I also yeah. think, that, think that it's going to give us the ability to communicate um, a little bit better 
uh, as, as a defense. I think that when you have one guy in that role working, whether it's in the run game or the pass game, there's not a whole lot of multiple teaching to different people. So that guy's going in to learn both roles. He's not just going in to learn one role. And if we ever in a situation where we need nickel, uh, we're not having to reteach it. On a similar note, you've spoken about last year how excited you were about Tim Irvin and what he could bring to this team. What, what's it going to look like with him on defense? What kind of impact do you think he can have? Uh, we'll, we'll look faster. Uh, we'll, we'll look like we, we, we tackle a lot better. Uh, he does a good job of cut tackling. Um, he, he, he understands the, um, his run gap responsibilities as, anybody that, as good as anybody that I've seen, especially being able to start games uh, in the SEC as, as a freshman. Uh, coming to this level, um, he'll also hold people accountable around him. Um, but we'll, we'll look a little bit, you know, a little bit faster and a little bit uh, better tackling from just that one uh, player being on the field when he's on the field. So it'll have a big impact on us. Is the spring of these any easier on you now that you kind of have a routine figured out? Uh, easy? No, it won't be easy. Uh, we're we're, we're going to you know, work anytime you're coming out of the situation and what we came out of. And, and very clearly, uh, I accept that. And it's, it's not going to be easy. Like I said, uh, th- each one of these games, the stress level, uh, each one of these practices will have the stress level of a game. And, th- and that's the atmosphere that I want in the building. And if, you know, if, if that's considered easy, then there's some special people in the world because I can't, I can't quite consider that easy. With the loss of Zay Jones and some others, talk about your uh, receiver approach this year. And it's going to be more of a, I guess, more of a committee. Or what can you say? Um, who besides who else besides Zay Jones were you referring to? Well, I, I, basically him, I guess. Okay. But, um, um, you know, we can't replace him, and I've tried to make sure that our kids understand that we're not trying to replace him. It's going to be really, really hard. Uh, as every one of these scouts that come in here, these National Football League scouts that come in here, general managers, head ball coaches, everybody that call and talk about Zay, they tell you how great of a player he is. That means that there's not very many of those out there in the world, period, even in the National Football League as we speak. So we're not going to be able to replace him. We do get some help back that we have not had in a while. Uh, we also do know that we have Jimmy uh, coming back. You know, We also do know that we have Quay coming back with a lot of catches under their belts. Uh, we also know that Terrell Green has grown. Um, we also know that DeAndre Ferrier is back. So uh, this is probably one of the only times that I've been on the team where uh, everybody ex- except the number one receiver is back at that position. I think it's a very deep group. Uh, we've got to get to Saturdays. Uh, we've got a long way to get there. Uh, but I think that uh, overall as a group, uh, that level of depth and with the kids that we're bringing in and the kids that are already here that have not played that you don't know much about, you know, that's a position that's in a good good spot for a long time to come. The one you Simi alluded to there was Trayvon Brown and, yeah. and Davon Grayson. What roles – Specifically with those two, do you hope to see them play? Uh, you know, when we didn't have them last year, we kind of thought that they were going to be the one, two, or the three. Um, and that was with Zay included in it all because of how great, you know, they had performed. You guys saw them in the spring game. You got a chance to see them. You've had a chance to see them in previous years here. So we had this, this thought that our one, two, and three, you, know, you just think about this, is Zay Jones, Trayvon Brown, and Davon Grayson. Um, that was our one, two, and three. I don't know a better one, two, and three anywhere in college football. So with them back, um, uh, you know, if things continue to go in the direction that they're going, and they're back, and we didn't know very much about Jimmy last year, and we didn't know that Quay was going to have a, a, a big year. We didn't know that DeAndre was going to start to to turn into a, a really good player. You know, the sky's the limit for that, for that group if, if they come in and do what they're supposed to do on a daily basis and get better. When you have new posi- position coaches like you do in a few spots this year, including wide receiver, uh, how much do you expect them to bring in their some of their personality and some of their ideas versus you telling them what you expect and where you guys are as they join the staff? Uh, you know, competitive nature, I expect them to bring it. Uh, scheme and, and new thoughts, I expect them to bring it. Uh, from a standpoint of running a practice and how I want to run it, they'll listen. Uh, that's where I tell them the way that we want the practice ran. If there's certain things that you know I dislike, um, then then I'll I'll voice that and that'll change. But I expect them to come in and, and, and be themselves. I, I tell all of our coaches when we're in the uh, when we're in the process of trying to to put together a staff uh, once or twice, 
that I'm expecting you to be the head coach of your position. And when you're the head coach of your position, you have to be, uh, you heard me earlier talk about some of the drill work. Uh, you have to be innovative. And if I'm the one that's coming up with uh, your, your drills every single day, that's not necessarily a good thing. How do you like the setup of the schedule this year? You got an open date kind of early, but all Saturday games, no weeknight games. What's your perspective? I think, you know, that is going to be critical for us and connected to us not having to travel as much as we normally would travel. I like uh, some of the games that you, you look at that we have, and I'm not going to go into in depth, but you can kind of read between the lines. Uh, some of them are really, really tough road games. And then when they come into your building, that game kind of changes a lot. So I like that. You know, Thursday night games, mm, Friday night games, they're not as big of an adjustment for uh, coaches mentally as they are for players physically. And I've, I've played in a Sunday and then tried to turn around and, and, and play in a Thursday you know, game or a Saturday, Thursday, one or the other. Uh, it's not easy. You know, it's, it's not an easy deal. So when you do get a chance to get uh, six days of preparation between games, it, it's very, very helpful to at least the physical part of it for the athlete. So I like it. A lot of times guys say at the end of the year, a big year, that it started for them in off-season conditioning. And I know that's what you want for all of your guys. Were there any real standout performances this year in, in the off-season workouts, things that may lay the groundwork that you weren't expecting? Yeah, there was a standout performance, Coach C. Um, everybody else, uh, they did what we asked them to do. We did have some guys that have games, but we had too many guys in here to say uh, certain names to have games. I thought Coach C was, was exceptional. <laughs> I thought his staff, um, Bert and the rest of the crew, I thought they did a great job. Uh, they held people accountable, especially I thought they did a much, much, much uh, better job than I had basically ever been around in our offensive line and our defensive line. Uh, the accountability and the challenge there uh, was, was big time. With the quarterback, you know, Carter obviously has some experience. Does he kind of go into this spring with the first team or is it an open competition? I guess what's your take there? No, Garner is, is our starter. Um, if, if somebody takes that job from him, it'll be just that. They'll take the job from him. Uh, every job is always open, but this is his job, right? Uh, you, you're constantly trying to get better, and it's going to come to a point in time where we're not going to, you know, we're, I'm not playing any games going into this spring. He's our starting quarterback. Uh, guys will have the opportunity. I think we got some talent at that position uh, to give it uh, some some competition, but right now it's, it's Gardner. Do you expect that to be a competition, or do you expect that, that Gardner will just take the bull by the horns and go? You know, I've kind of learned that my expectations really don't mean a whole lot when it comes to competitive nature. Uh, I think that, you know, if Gardner has led to this point, what he's been doing, whether it's spotting every defensive lineman in the weight room on squats, he spots them. You know, that's, you know, that's kind of weird, but that shows you where their trust lies. I'm not just letting anybody spot me, especially if it's squats and, and, and bench when the, when the weight can fall on you. But he's the one who's spotting them. So, you know, that leadership we need, we need that leadership. So, and then his ability to know our offense now, you got to realize this kid came in in basically June last year and learned the entire offense, had to go in and play in an offense that he didn't have a spring in. He didn't, so his, his knowledge of the offense is, is a lot higher than, than other people. So it gives him a leg up. But uh, my expectations are for everybody to go out and play as hard as they can. And, you know, when it, when the dust settles, uh, the man standing will be the man that, that, that deserves to play, and he will play. So what's the uh, expected or you know, anticipated approach with Ifedi coming in as a freshman this year? Are you planning on redshirting him or keeping him ready to go, or what's the approach, the hope and the approach? You know, that's a tough one. And, and the reason why I'll tell you that is because he's not even, in my mind, a freshman yet. You know, he's still like a second semester senior in high school. But he's very mature. You know, I don't want to talk about his physical attributes uh, because I haven't seen them as they pertain to 22-year, 23-year-old men. What we're going to try to do is get him prepared to be able to play a football game. We're not trying to, you know, create any type of situation where we hurt him uh, over the next three or four years or next three or four months trying to get him ready. But we expect him to come in and compete as hard as he can because, you know, right now we have three quarterbacks uh, in the meeting room that are scholarship quarterbacks, and he's going to have to get some reps this spring. So we're trying to get him as ready as quickly as possible because he does have uh, some physical attributes that, that, that could help us. Coach, are there any other uh, transfers or late enrollees you all are taking a look at currently? Uh, yes, there, there potentially may be uh, a couple, um, and, and it always 
happens, you know, a lot of times after spring ball, kind of slightly during spring ball. So with the ability to, you know, just to be completely transparent with you, the, the process of trying to put together the final project, uh, pro, you know, product of, as a team, it won't end yet. It, it, it's not over yet.